Hello, everyone. Uh, pleasure to see you all here. Um, Startup Reykjavik is uh, Iceland's first accelerator and shares the same birthday as uh, Startup Iceland. Uh, this summer, we'll be running our eighth cohort, um, and uh, through uh, the two accelerators that uh, Arion Bank uh, owns, uh, we will now, at the uh, end of the summer, we have invested in, in 90 startups so far. I think that would make our bank the, the largest seed investor uh, in, in Iceland. Um, and uh, we have seen that, seen that there is definitely a need that we are fulfilling. Uh, you see the number of applications we received throughout the years. And uh, this year was no exception. Uh, we had 190 applications. and. Uh, uh, that applied for the 10 available seats. Now, uh, uh, many of you have seen these slides uh, of, uh, or one way of measuring an impact or uh, the success of, uh, of an accelerator to show how much they have received in funding. Another, of course, would be to see how much they have generated in revenue. That's information that we don't have, uh, actually. Uh, but in total, these companies since uh, 2012, this is uh, presented in cohorts, this is uh, around 3.8 billion uh, ISK. If I would add uh, the startup energy to uh, cohorts, uh, this number, it would be around 6.1 billion that uh, our companies have received in funding, two thirds of, uh, of which is equity. Now, Startup Reykjavik, for those who you're not familiar with, it's a, a seed stage, uh, mentor-driven business accelerator. It uh, relies on uh, tech, the Techstars model. We use their playbook, uh, that is, we select uh, 10 startups for that during the course of 10 weeks receive uh, uh, around $21,000 in, uh, in equity in, in exchange for 6% of uh, uh, ownership. And uh, as with Techstars and, and most accelerators, it's driven by uh, mentoring the experienced people that share their knowledge and expertise and, uh, and connections with, uh, with the participants. Now, one way to measure the impact uh, is to um, simply show how, what is the valuation of the portfolio. I'm going to be very open here and uh, tell you so you, what you see here is essentially, if you just look at the 20, 2012 cohort, we see that two companies are still active. They have received 608 million in, in funding, of which our valuation of our share in the companies is only 4.3 uh, million. So you can see which companies have, uh, have su survived the, the, the first four years of, uh, uh, if, if we uh, connect that to, to Terry's presentation. Uh, and I'm not going to dwell on this, I'll just uh, let you browse through these uh, names. And for the cohort since 2016, it looks like this. Uh, obviously, it's, it's natural that the, the most recent cohorts, they are, there are more companies alive uh, there than, for instance, in, in, in the first cohort. But in some uh, summary, we can see that uh, slightly more than half of the companies have some kind of an operation ongoing. We sold one third of the companies, usually back to the shareholder or the founders. And uh, there is still uh, uncertainty about 13% of the companies. So we are reaching soon the number, uh, one, uh, the number 100 uh, uh, of companies that we invested in. And uh, my anticipation is that we will be seeing very similar num numbers as uh, one reads about in the books, that we will see maybe 10% of the companies that will have a very decent or a fantastic uh, return on investment. Maybe another 10% will still be okay, having uh, 3 to 20 employees or what have you, and, and the rest, or, and the rest will, will simply wither away over time. That is my anticipation. What is interesting uh, about what's uh, happened in the past three years is that we see more mature companies and more mon mature founders applying. I think it's a very good um, description of how 
simply the ecosystem is uh, maturing uh, gradually. But I'm not going to dwell on this, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm not going to call on the guys who are in the cohort. I'm just going to browse uh, through, these, uh, th through these companies. So Eastlands Gervigrind, or uh, Icelandic AI, is uh, developing and uh, implementing and selling uh, a software as a service. They like to call your digital employee as a service. Uh, this, can, uh, this kind of a service is obviously, uh, we see a lot of these companies, but uh, these guys have paying clients, and which we are extremely, extremely happy with. Snorrecam is, uh, uh, is actually, if you would Google this, you would probably get around between 60 and 80,000 hits on, on YouTube. Uh, the Einar, uh, Einar Snorri and Eidur Snorri have developed a uh, uh, kind of a hardware that makes uh, filming uh, or a special unique angle when filming uh, that has been used in, in several Hollywood movies and in independent movies and they now want to make a consumer version of, uh, of this Nordicam. So Vilo is uh, uh, an AI stylist so uh, it's not about measurements on or uh, having stuff um, measured before you buy them but having using AI to have uh, to make simply to make better style in a, in, a, uh, in a sense so it's not about how, how things fit but how you as an individual what your measurements well not your measurements but your your kind of your body I don't even know how to explain this, but wh wh whatever your body, uh, body and, uh, and, and coloring of uh, either your hair or, or your everything around you, and so they're trying to uh, trying to solve that. Uh, this company is uh, uh, a highly intriguing company uh, founded by a, a doctor at the ER. Uh, it's called uh, Tracker. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Now I'm confusing with the other team. Etta. Yeah. yeah, Tracker. Yeah, so Track E A E H R Track E H R, and it's basically around uh, improving uh, the time or improving the time that doctors need to spend uh, uh, away from the desk. So doctors use a lot of time in front of the computer instead of talking to patients. So. Uh, while at that site, they have a fantastic software that uh, will improve or decrease the time that, uh, for registration uh, so they don't have to spend time at the, uh, uh, in front of a desktop. Extremely interesting company. Uh, base parking is a, almost a household name in Iceland. It's a valet parking or valet service at the uh, Keplaik airport. Uh, they are fighting the monopoly of Isavia at the, um, uh, at the, at the international airport. Uh, they have been growing phenomenally, uh, have good revenue, and uh, it will be a pleasure working with them on, on improving their business model uh, this summer. So, Edda, now I'm confused with Tracker and the other name. Yeah, sorry. The the, the first the, the e, yeah the EHR electronic health records was was whispers. So this is track EHR. So again, two doctors uh, that um, will be participating. They are sharing a similar problem, but not from uh, the medical staff's uh, behalf. But they want to improve communication between medical staff, patient, and their next of kin on why a why the patient is reading this kind of a treatment, the medicine uh, he or she is taking. Uh, so working with these two companies on kind of sharing information or uh, uh, implementing data into the system uh, is going to be very interesting. Uh, Checkmart is a company that wants to improve infrastructure for SMEs. Uh, we could call it kind of an e-commerce platform that uh, a centralized mar marketplace. Uh, for instance, if a mall uh, would like to be completely digital, uh, they, the mall could basically implement this uh, software. Uh, the value proposition for the consumer is that instead of when, when ordering from five retailers and paying five shipments, 
uh, you would only have to pay one. Uh, and they will be working not only in the digital space, but in the physical space as, uh, as well. The Icelandic School of Esports is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, we see this trend uh, ever growing uh, in Iceland as elsewhere. Uh, they have both a physical and a digital platform, uh, which we know that uh, even similar companies around, around the world are, are, are seeking, and I have uh, very hyped for, uh, for these guys. Smart sampling is, uh, as you can see, better and more efficient way to get intelligence from customers about your products. Essentially, you've been at the store, you're, offering, you're offered to uh, taste some cheese or crackers or whatever, and uh, maybe there's a happy or not uh, button. They're going to take this to the next level by uh, getting information from uh, consumers directly to the retailer, even the wholesaler, or even the manufacturer. Uh, a very large space that has been neglected uh, throughout the years. Um, and then we have ProNC, which is essentially AI for psychology analysis. Uh, it might be, seem complicated to go through the psychology analysis uh, via AI. Uh, according to them, not so difficult. And uh, it will be very exciting to see how, how they manage to, uh, uh, to pull through on that. Uh, a company in operation. Uh, in the physical world, but we'll be taking it uh, digitally with, uh, with artificial intelligence. Uh, we will be, just so you know, for those of you who are interested and obviously are more than welcome to join us during the summer, we will be uh, at uh, Borgatun 18, which is uh, on the second floor above the Arion Bank's uh, branch, in main branch in, in Borgatun. Hope to see you all there uh, during the summer. Thank you.